Hey, welcome back to Mechanical Pros. I'm here with Brian, and we are talking about the tools you need to do a proper leak search. Brian, tell me what we got going on here. Yeah, okay. First, we'll kind of work through a few different tools and different ways to do leak searches. We're kind of going to start at the, the bottom end and talk about some things that we don't really use that much here, but they're out there. So I just want to kind of get them out there and talk about them. You come up on a system and it's completely out of refrigerant, and, and we're just gonna take for granted that we know it has a refrigerant leak, you know, so it's out of gas, we gotta get up there and figure it out. One thing um, that doesn't get used as much as it used to, and again, it's not my preferred method of leak searching, but it is a way that's out there, is um, introducing a fluorescent dye into the refrigerant piping of the system and then using a black light. So as that nitrogen, you add your nitrogen first, then you'd put your dye in there under pressure, and as you got a leak, as it's leaking out, you can use a black light and it will pinpoint that leak, fluorescent leak. But there's a lot of downsides to it. Obviously, if it's a daylight, you're never gonna see it. So it would have to be above ceiling where it's dark. You know, it has to be really dark for that to work. And then there's also a lot of equipment. Most equipment does not recommend using this because there's a potential for stopping up strainers and screens and metering devices and things like that. So I would say, I mean, this would be like my absolute last resort if there was no other way, but can't stress enough, check manufacturer recommendations before you ever add any foreign materials into your refrigerant piping system. Because again, VRF systems, Dykins, they'll void warranties if you put yeah. this in there. Yeah, so uh, residential, maybe the dumber units, yeah. no uh, really electronic expansion valves and yep. such. Maybe yeah, you've got four, a 30-year-old beater and yeah. the, the customer is just like, we just want the cheapest possible fix we can, and you're just trying to help them out. Maybe you can try it there. Just yeah. want to get out there. It is something that's on the market. Um, been out for a long time, and people have had success with finding leaks with it, but there can be downsides to using yeah. that. So we just talk Don't about put that. Don't too much dye in the That's another thing. In the circuit. And it can be, and there's a cleanup that goes with it after the fact, too, to get it back out of there. You're supposed to blow it out with nitrogen and things. And sometimes that doesn't happen and so not a great way to do it just wanted to bring it up because it's out there because we're talking about doing uh, leak searches and the tools to use next thing st still sticking with the scenario that the system is completely out of refrigerant when we walk up on it so we would connect our refrigerant gauges to that system we would then take uh, dry nitrogen pressurize the system up the product i like using is probably my favorite uh, spray on leak detector is this cow blue i kept saying you know soapy solutions and things like that and you wouldn't truly want to mix dawn disc soap and water and try to use that the great thing about this cow blue and other products on the market for liquid leak detection is they really adhere to the pipe or whatever component you're spraying it on and it won't run right off so it sticks to it really good and it'll stay there for a while so as if it's a really small leak and it's got, it takes it a while to bubble up, this will stay on the pipe a lot longer. It makes a good bubble. It makes a really good bubble. We know the system has a refrigerant leak, but it still has refrigerant in it. Maybe someone's had to come before us and put gas in it. Now it's low on charge again, but it still has gas in it. That's when we'll start using electronic leak detectors to find that. And basically the way an electronic leak detector works, it's got a little air pump in it. It's sampling the air and it will pick up different type of refrigerants and ring out. First one we have here, this is a really old school one. They still make these style, these wand style leak detectors, and they're, they're fine to use. Usually, if you're on a budget, this might be the one you'd buy. Um, maybe you're just starting out in the field and you don't have a, a lot of money to spend on tools. It's a fine leak detector. I would say one thing is just read the manuals, do your research before you buy one, because tools are expensive. There's a lot of maintenance in them. It's not the top quality, but it'll get you by in some scenarios residential split systems, some commercial units or two. It's fine pick up big leaks. There's lots of different brands out there. A lot of these are rechargeable or they'll take replaceable AA batteries, flexible wand, you know, which is nice and handy. It's hands-free. Walk me through this. Mm -hmm. So I'll wand. turn it on. Yep. And then this is my sniffer, right? Yep, that's right. So I'm taking this along the refrigerant circuit. Yes, right. Starting maybe on the evaporator coil, working all your way down to the mm -hmm. compressor and then working your way back up, maybe that on the high, high pressure side. Yep, that's exactly Would right. Would you start an evaporator or the... Or the uh... If I were to throw a, a number out there, I'd say 60% of the refrigerant leaks are usually in the evaporator coral on a U-band or a tube sheet. So yeah, that's, that's yeah. usually where I'm gonna go right away, is just start there. You can do something as simple as when you get to your indoor unit, 
Um, stab it in, if you can take your drain line apart, and of course if it's dry and there's no water in it, you can stick that in the drain line and a lot of time the refrigerant leak will migrate down there. You won't pinpoint it, but if it goes off when you stick it in that drain line, you know, okay, the leak's in my evaporator coil somewhere. Mm -hmm. Quick way to narrow it down and not waste a lot of time. Yeah, that's a good Really small leaks probably won't work that well for you, but if it's a decent leak that's leaking out and it's in that indoor unit, you'll probably start ringing out in the drain pan. So okay. that's a good way to do it. And then so this LED uh, display will, mm -hmm. uh, what happens to it when it, when it finds? Yeah, on that particular brand, it's got a little LED like bar graph that'll go up and down as it starts ringing out and picking up leaks and the beep will get more rapid as okay. it gets closer. So as you, if you pinpoint the leak, you'd see that bar graph go all the way up and it'd really be ringing out. And as you started backing off, it would start just dropping down and okay. go away. Maintenance on these, like anything else, you got to keep your probe clean on the end. There's little filters that come with it, need periodic changing. So, you know, just like every other expensive tool, you got to take care of it and maintain them. Price point for something like this? Price point probably 250 something okay. like that. There's some a little cheaper, some a little more, probably average price, 200 250 They're not bad. They do a good job. They're not the top of the mark, but they'll, they'll get you by if you're just starting out or maybe you're, you know, just in a pinch and you, you don't yeah. have the money for the, for the bigger stuff. All right. Tell me what we got here. So this is the one we prefer using um, here. We've had a lot of luck with it, especially when we saw the transition into refrigerant R410A. Um, when we'd use these, they'll still pick it up, but it just, we chase our tails a lot on small leaks trying to find them. Um, when we started using this Backrack H10 version, I physically compared the two beside the same leak and walked up to it closer, and this thing was ringing out, you know, way before I ever got it on this one. So that's why we've really started using okay. this brand. So would you say that, you know, this one might be better for 22 or other refrigerants? Definitely good for 22. It'll still pick up 410. It just doesn't have the, the sensitivity, in my opinion, of that, of that back rack brand. Okay. That one's really good and it's very universal. It's a good point though, John, before you buy one, read the directions because there'll be some refrigerants that that particular monitor may not pick up. So really mm -hmm. need to know what refrigerants you're going to be looking for and then make sure what you buy is capable of picking that up. Walk me through this back rack yeah. version here. So this guy is a rechargeable battery. I've got him plugged in right now because I'm charging it up, but that's, it can be hands-free or if say something happened to the rechargeable battery, the cool thing is about it, you can plug it in and still use it. This guy's not so much the case. It just takes double A's. A lot of these will have rechargeable batteries. You can do the same thing with. Again, it's got a little air pump just like this one does as you turn it on. It's pumping and it's sampling air across this tube all the time and it's looking to pick up refrigerant. Another maintenance item on this one is it is calibration. You got to make sure it's calibrated correctly before you get started. There's several ranges on this refrigerant leak detector, small, medium, large, depending on what size leak you got. Okay, I like to always start off with my leak size setting on large and then that'll get me close to the area of the leak. It'll ring out quite a bit, but it won't pinpoint it. So once I'm ringing out and I'm close to it, I'll switch it to medium and that'll help get me a little bit closer. But I won't be able to pinpoint it exactly, but if my leak detector's still ringing out, I know I'm really close. At that time, I will switch it to small leak setting and that should get me right over top of where that leak is. After I have feel confident, I know the leak's right in this general area, I'm usually going back to this guy because that's going to bubble. Mm -hmm. And when that bubble shows up, that's exactly where your leak is. This is going to always get you, I mean, really close. And sometimes if it's a big leak, you can visually see it. When you get on it, you'll know it. But if all else fails, a little hairline crack, once you get in the area you know it is, spray it with the soap. This guy has a little calibration bottle that comes with it. Every time you buy one of these, initially you have to set it up and make sure it's calibrated right for sensitivity. So it has a little test bottle in there with a little hole, a little silver disc sticker that you put back on after. And the way you're supposed to do it is you turn this guy on. Should start out on the low setting. I don't know if you guys can hear him about every second, a little click or so. As I get closer to that, I should start ringing out here in a second. If I were on a, a HVA system that had a refrigerant leak and I got on the leak, that's what I'd expect to hear. If I just opened this thing up and it wasn't ringing out like that for me, I would know it's out of calibration. And there is a little heater adjustment here. By increasing or decreasing that heater increases or decreases the sensitivity of this. And this little bottle is going to be like you're on a, a refrigerant leak. So if it's not ringing out like you want, you're going to have to have it on there, a small screwdriver to get down in there and start dialing that in or out till you get exactly 
where you need to be off the ringtones. It's in the manual that tells you how often you should see that or how frequent the ring should be going, uh -huh. basically. Uh, another thing with this thing is there's a little, hard to see there, but there's a little red ball that floats in the end of this. So as you turn it on and the air pump comes on, you're supposed to stick your finger across that on the bottom and you should see that little red ball suck up into this. If that doesn't happen, there's filters that come with this that have to be periodically changed. That filter is stopped up. So big thing to always make sure because you could spend hours literally chasing your tail and the whole thing is you don't have your equipment set up right. Mm -hmm. The leak could be right in front of you the whole time. So always for sure, before you get your leak detector out and start using it, make sure it's functioning properly or you're just you know wasting your time. You're wasting everybody's time. Yeah. So that's probably the, the most key thing with electronic leak detectors is every time before you use them, we need to make sure the sensitivity is working properly, they're calibrated properly, our little filters are clean. These guys will also have little filters in the end of them. They come with replacements when you buy them. They're very cheap to order new ones when you run out of them. That's a key component of this thing that gets missed a lot. Hey, tell me about this calibration. Mm -hmm. um, so this bottle come out? Yep, it comes out. Okay, and so what, what is this? Is this, uh, it's not refrigerant. No, it's not refrigerant. I, I don't know if it's alcohol or uh, yeah. It picks it picks up. It rings out just like a refrigerant would, but it is not a refrigerant. Okay. So you don't have to worry about anything with refrigerant laws on it. You need to replace this every every so often. Per the manual, it says every six months you're supposed to replace it. But I would say the main thing is if I was putting that on there, and no matter what I did with my heater adjustment, if it wasn't ringing out, I would definitely think something's up with my little bottle. Um, one thing, this little silver disc is a little sticker, so. What it says, and I would recommend too, is after you get done calibrating, put that back on there because there's a little hole in that and it'll just evaporate all that out of there. So as long as you keep that little sticker on there tight, that'll probably last a lot longer than six months. But per the directions, it says every six months you should change that. Gotcha. And so this does a multitude of refrigerants. Yeah, yeah that, it says about everything we deal with. Okay. Uh, 410, 22, 138, 123. I haven't run across anything. There, there very well may be something in there that it doesn't pick up, but for what we do in commercial HVAC, okay. I've had no issues with it. It's also got a little a balance, so it's got an auto and manual button. Um, so what's cool about the auto mode is what it says it'll do is if you've got, it calls it background refrigerant, and all I could think is maybe you've got a system that's got a couple leaks on it, you found this one already, now you're looking for more. It says if you set it in that auto mode, it kind of blocks out refrigerant that may be trace gas sort of in the atmosphere around you. It'll keep it from you chasing your tail on nuisance stuff. If you set it in manual, it kind of takes that away from you and then you manually have to set how sensitive it is. I always just leave it in auto because I can calibrate it that mm -hmm. way and rock and roll. But if you know it's got a leak, you know your tool set up right, you just can't find it, that's when you might want to go to manual mode okay. and really dial that sensitivity in there for you. There's a headphone jack yeah, on here. Yeah. Tell me, you ever use that? I've not used it on this machine. I've used it on other ones, but it is a very cool feature. So in your noisy environments, industrial, mechanical rooms, a lot of times you're just visually, you know, that's cool thing, it flashes red mm -hmm. every time it goes off. So you, you got a visual, but sometimes you're reaching around things and you can't see that and it's noisy. That's where the headphones come yeah. in because you'll hear it ringing out on the headphones. Yeah. So it's cool, it comes with them. It's a nice little feature and uh, very, very handy in noisy environments. Can this thing take heat and knocking around? I've never had an issue yeah. keeping the truck all the time. I just, you know, keep it, check it every time you use it, make sure you put it up the right way. They're, they're pretty solid. They've been around in some form or fashion for years. Johnson Penn used to make this brand. You talk to a 30-year chiller man and he's had one, probably still got one at his house. Mm -hmm. They're really solid and they've just kept technology and they just change it up a little bit, but it's really the same exact machine, same way you calibrate it, everything's the same. All right, there you go. That's what you need to know to do a proper leak search. So Brian, thanks so much for joining yep. us. Always good to be with you. Hey, hit that like, hit that subscribe. If you guys want to see something specific, please hit it in the comments and we will try to get it to you.